Hi everyone, today I have a really interesting problem for you and we're going to be learning how to solve polynomial equations. Now this is not going to be a regular functional equation video where we usually tackle functional equations and polynomials. It's going to be a little bit different, a little bit more algebraic in a way, a little bit more involving roots and stuff. So yeah, wait for a few moments before you find out. This is the problem number 14 from the AIME in 2020. So AIME is basically an exam, uh, you get invited to that exam if you do well on the AMC. And in this video, we're going to be covering uh, polynomial equations, roots of a polynomial, then we have book sessions for the AMC and AIME, and at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem. So let's begin. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. So let's begin. So they have given us that p of x is a quadratic polynomial with complex coefficients and leading coefficient is 1, right? And suppose that the equation p of p of x is 0 has four distinct solutions, 3, 4, a and b. So they might want us to find the sum of all possible values of a plus b whole squared. Okay. Well, so first of all, what does a root of a polynomial mean? So for example, if a number alpha is a root of a polynomial, then essentially means p of alpha is zero. Right? This is pretty basic knowledge. So now if I take px, the polynomial p of x to be equal to, let's say, x squared minus m plus n x plus mn, this essentially mean that m comma n are roots of p of x. And essentially from Vieta's relations, we know that m plus n is minus b by a and m n is c by a and a in this case is 1. So we get this equation over here, right? This is the uh, equation for p of x. Now it is given to us that p of p of x is equal to 0 has four solutions, you know, 3, 4, a and b. So that implies two of these solutions are for p of x equal to m and two of these are for p of x equal to m, right? So these four solutions that we had, 3, 4, a and b, two of these are going to be for the polynomial p of x equal to m and two of these are going to be for the polynomial p of x equal to n. As you really see the beauty of symmetry over here, m comma n are interchangeable, right? m comma n are in interchangeable and also a comma b are also interchangeable, right? There's a slight symmetry in the problem. So now using that, using that, why is it important? Because we can just resolve this into two basic cases actually. The case one would be where p of 3 is equal to p of 4 is equal to m and p of a is equal to p of b is equal to n. So here we have two roots for this p of m and two roots for this p of n. So we have this case and the case two is um, obviously the other case where p of a is equal to p of 3 is equal to m and p of b is equal to p of 4 is equal to n. So again, two roots uh, in each case. Right. Okay. Now what are we going to do after that? So we're going to just examine both of the cases one by one. And so we're going to get a value of a plus b from here. Let's say k1 and uh, a plus b whole square from here. And we're going to get a value of a plus b whole square is equal to k2 from here. And we need to find the sum of values of these. Okay, k1 plus k2 essentially. Okay. Let's just examine case one. Right. So what do we have in case one? We have p of three is equal to p of four is equal to m. Right. So if I just plug in p of 3 into the given polynomial, I get 9 minus 3 m plus n plus mn is equal to 16 minus 4 m plus n plus mn. And uh, that will be equal to m, of course. And if I just simplify this, I will get m plus n is equal to 7. And also I had p of a is equal to p of b is equal to n. Or uh, in other words, I have a square minus a times m plus n plus mn is equal to b square minus b times m plus n plus mn and you know i can just simplify this as a square minus b square is equal to m plus n a minus p so essentially that leaves us with a plus b is equal to m plus n and since m plus n was 7 a plus b is equal to 7 and therefore therefore a plus b whole square is equal to 49 so we got one value of a plus b in this case right now let's examine the other case case 2 now what does what does happen in case two? Right in case two we had p of a is equal to p of three, and that was equal to m, right? So that gives us with a square minus a 
m plus n plus mn is equal to 9 minus 3 m plus n plus mn and this is equal to m of course and if i just simplify this i'll get a square minus 9 is equal to m plus n into a minus 3 in other words um, a plus 3 is equal to m plus n this is one thing that i get and uh, another thing that i can get is uh, similarly like basically p of b is equal to p of 4 is equal to n and from this i will get b plus 4 is equal to m plus n you can do the calculation but essentially you would uh, reach at this point so now at this point i actually have two equations if you can see through the lines a little bit i have two equations um, one of them is 9 minus 3 m plus n plus mn is equal to m right that was obtained by putting p of 3 is equal to m and the other one essentially that i had was um 16 minus 4 m plus n plus mn and that was essentially equal to n right and then i obtained by putting p of uh, p of uh, by this p of 4 is equal to n so i got these two equations and if i subtract both of these what will i get i will get minus 7 plus m plus n is equal to m minus n right so i can just sub uh, subtract m from both sides and i'll get um 2n is equal to 7 but therefore n is equal to 7 by 2 and which essentially implies that m is equal to minus 3. now why is that great because then we can essentially obtain the values a uh, so a and b so m plus n is 7 by 2 minus 3 is equal to 1 by 2 right and um, a, a plus 3 was m plus n so a plus 3 was m plus n and b plus 4 was also m plus n and if we add these two equations i'll get a plus b plus 7 is equal to twice of m plus n or in other words a plus b plus 7 is equal to 1 so therefore a plus b is equal to minus 6 and a plus b whole squared is equal to 6 squared that is 36. the sum of the two values of a plus b whole squared that was given to k2 is equal to 36 plus 49 which becomes i believe 85 right 49 plus 37 and 6 85 so yes the correct answer in this case would be 85. So yeah, I hope you really enjoyed that problem. And uh, this was a pretty fun problem of polynomial equations. And yeah, we essentially just deal with roots and uh, figure out two cases because of the symmetry in the problem. And that's just made our lives a little bit easier. After that, it was just algebra and a little bit of calculations. Okay, so after that, we have certain book suggestions for the AMC and AIME. We have Mathematics Can Be Fun by Yakov Perelman, Mathematical Circles, The Russian Experience by Foman, Algebra can be fun by Yakov Perelman, and Excursion Mathematics, Challenges and Thrills of Pre-College Mathematics, and Elementary Number Theory by David Burton. Now at the end, I have a similar but challenging problem for you. And this is in a way very closely related with that original problem. And uh, this is stating that let B and C be real numbers and define the polynomial P of X is equal to X squared plus BX plus C. And P of P of 1 is equal to P of P of 2. And it is given that P of 1 is not equal to P of 2. So find P of 0. So this is quite an interesting problem as well. It's very closely related with the one I solved. So if you've thoroughly understood my explanation, then you should have a good crack at this. And uh, yes, as always, if you were able to solve it or if you make any progress on it, please let me know in the comment section. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.